welcome to the wonderful world of bread making with your new West Bend bread and dough maker. To ensure success every time, I'd like to familiarize you with the bread maker and with the bread making process. But before we begin, let's review a few basic tips and guidelines when using your new bread maker. First, always read the instructions carefully. A recipe book with care and use instructions has been included for your benefit. When using the product, keep these simple thoughts in mind. Always place the unit on a dry, stable countertop or table that is heat resistant. Good ventilation is critical in making good bread. Never cover the unit during operation. Follow the instructions and recipes carefully. The most important step in making bread is measuring the ingredients accurately and then using them in the order listed in the recipe. And last but not least, don't touch the control panel buttons after the bread maker has been turned on. This interrupts the cycle. With those thoughts in mind, let's take a closer look at the many special features and parts of the West Bend bread and dough maker. The bread pan has a number of special parts and is coated with a super slick premium non-stick finish. The arrows indicate how to twist it in place in the oven chamber. The bread pan should never be immersed in water or placed in a dishwasher. To clean it, simply put a small amount of water and soap inside. Wash with a soft cloth or sponge, rinse and dry with a soft cloth. The knead bar easily fits in the bottom of the pan and is removable for cleaning. The cover features a large viewing window so you can watch what's going on inside. Plus, it slides right off for cleaning. The electronic control panel is the bread maker's brain. It's very important you understand what each button does and the options that are available to you. The bread select button lets you choose six different bread settings as well as a dough setting. With each press of the button, the menu settings and the time required to complete each setting appears. Let's just walk through the selections. Basic takes 3 hours and 40 minutes. Basic Rapid takes 3 hours. The Whole Wheat setting takes 4 hours and 20 minutes. The Rapid version is 3 hours and 30 minutes. The French setting takes 4 hours and 10 minutes. The next setting is Sweet. It takes 3 hours and 50 minutes. The Dough setting is the shortest cycle. It takes only 1 hour and 20 minutes. Our next selection is the bread color button. We can choose from three different crust colors. With each press of the button, choose from light, medium, or dark. If you like to wake up to fresh bread in the morning, the timer buttons for delayed start is the perfect answer. The timer can be programmed to delay the start of the bread maker for up to 13 hours. The start stop button turns the bread maker on and off. A red signal light under the word on will glow and it will remain lit until the bread maker is turned off. To turn the unit off, press and hold the start stop button down for about three seconds or until the on light goes out. The lock button lets you lock the selected program into the control panel after the bread maker has been turned on. This will prevent accidental tampering of the control buttons which can interfere with the bread making process. Once the bread maker is functioning, the words rest, knead, rise, and bake will always tell you which cycle the bread is in. The process time also begins to count down in minutes, so you always know how much time remains before the bread is done. And once the bread is done, an audible alert sounds. Now, if the bread is not removed immediately after baking, the bread maker automatically goes into a keep warm mode for up to three hours to keep the bread deliciously warm. The last special feature is a too hot, too cold warning. This tells you that the oven chamber is not the correct temperature for making a great loaf of bread. Now that we have reviewed all the features of the West Bend Bread and Dough Maker, let's make a loaf of country white bread, a one and a half pound loaf. The recipe is featured on page 39 of your recipe book. Also, if you have any questions about anything we've discussed, please closely read the care use instructions. Okay, let's begin by adding one cup of tepid water to the bread pan. Don't use hot or warm water because that would kill the yeast. It's very important that we measure the ingredients accurately. For the liquids, a see-through measuring cup is best. The liquid level should be right at the measurement marking at eye level.
Our next step is to add two and three quarter cups of bread flour. Don't use all-purpose flour, self-rising flour, or cake flour because poor results will be obtained. It's very important to measure the dry ingredients accurately. We suggest that you spoon the flour into the dry measuring cups and then level it off. Then add two tablespoons of dry milk, two tablespoons of sugar, and one and three quarter teaspoons of salt to the bread pan. The tablespoon and teaspoon measurements should also be level. Tap the pan to settle the dry ingredients. Push some of the flour mixture into the corners, then make a slight well in the very center for the yeast to be added later. Moving on, divide two tablespoons of butter or margarine into four equal pieces, placing a piece into each corner of the pan. It doesn't matter if you prefer margarine or butter, since they're interchangeable and they can be used right from the refrigerator. Our next step in the recipe is to add two teaspoons of active dry yeast to the very center of the pan, right where we made our slight well. This area protects the yeast from becoming wet. Of course, you should always check the expiration date on the yeast to make certain it's fresh. There's more information about yeast and the types to use in your recipe book. Now, we're ready to put the bread pan into the oven chamber. We recommend that you put the dry ingredients into the pan outside of the chamber so you don't accidentally spill inside the chamber. The bread pan twists to lock in place, and we close the cover. Program the bread select for basic, and the process time of 3 hours, 40 minutes, appears in the display. Then we choose our bread color for the crust. I prefer medium. Press the start stop button to turn the bread maker on. The on light will glow when the bread maker is on. While we wait for our bread to bake, I'd like to take a few moments and talk about bread mixes, like the one that was packed with your bread maker. Prepackaged mixes are easy to prepare. However, just remember to check the expiration date for freshness, and like the recipes, always follow the instructions carefully. Always add the recommended amount of liquid to the bread pan first, then the flour mixture, tap, make a slight well, and add the yeast on top. Make certain that if you're using a 100% whole wheat or natural grain mix, you select the whole wheat or whole wheat rapid bread setting. Don't forget to select the desired bread color. If you like to save time and money, you can prepare your own bread mixes ahead of time and store them in the refrigerator. Simply measure all the dry ingredients, accurately of course, into a plastic bag. Don't add the yeast, and then close with a twist tie. Label what type of bread and the size loaf. When you're ready to make the bread, simply add the liquid ingredients to the pan as the recipe directs. Add the dry mixture and level. Then add the butter or margarine and the yeast on top. Making bread is really quite simple if you just remember the golden rule. Don't take shortcuts and always, always measure the ingredients accurately and add them in the correct order. Now, sometimes things just don't go as perfectly as we'd like. Then what do we do? Well, I'd like to show you some common errors we see when people begin to make bread. Let's review some troubleshooting areas. For example, if your bread collapsed while baking, you probably didn't measure the liquid accurately. If your loaf is mushroom in shape, you probably added too much yeast or perhaps the wrong type of yeast. If your loaf looks like a gnarly, knotted oak tree, you probably didn't use enough liquid. Does your loaf look short? Perhaps you didn't use the right type of flour, or maybe the liquid was too hot. And last, if your bread doesn't slice easily, if it seems sticky, you probably didn't allow the bread to cool for the recommended 15 to 30 minutes. I've covered a few common errors in making bread. If you're having trouble, please refer to the front section of your recipe book. Fifteen problems and their solutions are covered. If you're still feeling frustrated, call the West Bend toll-free helpline. The number is printed on the cover of your recipe book as well as on the back of the bread machine. Oh, our bread is ready. An electronic tone alerts us to the fact that the cycles have been completed and the bread is finished. So, we simply remove the bread pan using a pot holder, invert the pan to remove the loaf of bread, and again, we need to allow the bread to cool on the rack for at least 15 minutes.
Ah, time's up, and we're ready for the best part of making bread at home. Mmm, simply delicious. Thank you for joining me, and enjoy your new West Bend bread and dough maker.